Hi again, English 108 students. This is Jenny Dale, your English librarian, and I use she, her, hers pronouns. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use the two databases featured on your English 108 research guide to find sources. A database is a searchable collection of information. So in our context, databases are going to be leading you to sources about literary works. I'm featuring two databases in this video and on your research guide, Literary Reference Center and the MLA International Bibliography. They have similar interfaces and search functions, but the sources you're going to find in each one will differ. So we're going to start by going to our English 108 research guide. So you can either go directly to uncg.libguides.com slash eng108 or you can click on the library resources tab in your Canvas site. From there, I'm going to click on the tab labeled Finding and Identifying Scholarly Sources. And the first database that we'll look at on this page is called Literary Reference Center. If you're not already logged into Canvas or your UNCG email account, you may have to log in with your UNCG credentials to get this page to work. But if you come from the research guide that I've created for your class, that's all you'll need to log in. So when you're in, you'll see these three search boxes. I'm going to try to search for down and out in Paris and London, Oops. a text by George Orwell. So as we go through results, we've got 32, and I'm seeing that each result has an icon next to it. Here's one that says review, one that says book, one down here that says academic journal, and more. I'm going to recommend that for your purposes, you're going to limit to academic journals and literary criticism under source types on the left side of the page. So academic journals. and literary criticism. Even with these limits, be aware that some of the sources that are described in the line underneath their title will be called work analysis. These are not typically going to be considered scholarly sources. They're usually plot overviews, so you can see that this one, for instance, comes from Masterplot's two nonfiction series. The Masterplot series is just a series of plot summaries. So in this case, I'm going to choose result number four because it mentions Orwell's Paris in the academic journal article title. To see more information, I'm clicking on the title to go to a page that gives me a lot more detail. From this page, I can come down and read the abstract, which is a short summary of the article that will let me know if the article sounds like it's going to be useful to me. I can also, using the features over on the right, email myself article, which is what I recommend. You can also send yourself an MLA citation. And this way you will have the article information as well as that MLA citation in your email. If you don't want to email it to yourself like I just did, you can always click on the permalink button and save the link that you see there in Google Docs or wherever it is that you're keeping track of your sources. Just make sure you don't try to save or bookmark the link that's up here in the address bar. It won't always work for you. So this abstract is great, but I can actually see up here this is a 19 page article. So if I want to read the whole thing beyond just that one paragraph abstract, this is where I want to click the check for full text. So the full text isn't embedded in Literary Reference Center, but I can click this check for full text and walk through the steps to view the full text. So I could click this view full text. It's slowly taking me to a page here from Taylor and Francis online where I can click the PDF option. If a PDF is available, that's always what I recommend because it makes citation a lot easier. With the PDF, I can easily skim through to make sure this is kind of meeting those requirements of a scholarly source that I've described on your research guide. So we've got CM Stan as our author here, and they're affiliated with the Center for Philosophy, Arts, and Literature from Duke University. So definitely someone I would consider a scholar. 
As I'm going through, I'm also seeing lots of these uh, footnotes that indicate in-text citation in this case. And then if I get all the way to the bottom, again, this is a 19-page article, so pretty lengthy. I see that there is a full list of references explaining everything that was used in research for this article. The length of it, that 19 pages, also makes it clear to me that this is not just going to be a plot summary of the primary sources. It's going to be way too long to just be summarizing plots. Okay, so recapping, Literary Reference Center is a great place to start looking for scholarly sources for this assignment. I would limit to academic journals and literary criticism, but try to stay away from those sources that come from master plots or labeled with work analysis or author biography. You may run into a situation where you can't find scholarly sources on here, depending on the work you choose. So I try to search for sunny memories of foreign lands, the text by Harriet Beecher Stowe. I get five results this time. One is an academic journal article, and the rest are identified as just being author biographies. So those aren't really the kinds of scholarly sources that I would need for my interpretation and analysis for this assignment. So knowing that there's only that one scholarly source here, and I don't know how much it's necessarily going to be talking about the topic that I have, I have another option, which is to try a different resource, the other one that I have linked. So once again, I'm going to start by going to that English 108 research guide, either by going again to the direct link at uncg.libguides.com slash eng108, or by clicking that library resources tab in Canvas. And I'm going back to that finding and identifying scholarly sources. And this time I'm clicking on MLA International Bibliography. All right, so I'm here in MLA. You'll notice that it looks pretty much the same and I'm gonna try my same search again. Sunny memories of foreign lands. Still not getting a ton of sources, but I've got twice as many as I had before. I've got 11 this time. Um, and as I'm scrolling through, you should see things look pretty similar. We've got our icons on the side. Um, so the, the look is pretty much the same as our other database that we looked at, but the content is different. So as I recommend in my description of this database on your research guide, the first thing I'm going to do here is check this box next to excludes dissertations. So dissertations, if you're not familiar with them, are really long papers required to get a PhD. In English, they can often be up to 300 pages, which is way too much for what we need this time. So as I'm looking through the titles here to see what looks interesting to me, I'm going to click on number seven, Stowe's Sunny Memories of Highland Slavery. I see the book icon next to this before I clicked it. So I know it's not going to be a scholarly journal article, but it could still be a scholarly source. On the page with more information here, I can see similar options to what I had in Literary Reference Center. So I can email it to myself. I can look for an MLA citation with the cite button. Somewhere in here, there we go. And I can also get the permalink to bring me back to this page. What I don't have in this case is an abstract. So I may have to take a leap of faith here based on the title to assume that it might work. So I can see, by the way, down here in this document information section that they've identified this publication type as a book article. I would usually call this kind of thing a book chapter. So I'm gonna check the full text like I did before, but this time I do have to take one extra step. So instead of just having a view full text link on this page, since this is a chapter from a book, I have to click one of these two places where it says check holdings in the library catalog. To see this way, I'm looking to see if we have it electronically, um, even though it's not in an article format. 
So here it looks like we do. I'm going to click on where it says View eBook, and I'm just going to check the first one here, but you can play around and see which ones work or don't work for you. Here I am in the eBook, and as I'm scrolling through the contents, I can see the chapter that I need, Stowe's Sunny Memories of Highland Slavery. So if I click on that, I can download the PDF from this point, but I also want to just take a look through here um, and see if I'm also seeing the information that I need to make sure this is scholarly. I'm definitely seeing citations, not only those notes, but I'm seeing some in-text citations clearly from the texts themselves. If I get to the end of this chapter again, this is another long one. As you'll see, most of the time scholarly sources in literature are going to be on the lengthier side. But I do have a list of notes here at the end and a full list of uh, bibliographic sources so I can see exactly what's being cited. I can also, I know Judy Newman was the author of this, I can look at the notes on contributors in this book and see if I can figure out if Judy Newman is a scholar and I see here Judy Newman is a professor of American Studies in the School of American and Canadian Studies, University of Nottingham. So definitely someone I would consider a scholar. So I would recommend exploring the MLA International Bibliography if you're not finding what you need in Literary Reference Center. If you need any help finding sources, you can always email me at jedale2 at uncg.edu. You can find that information also on that ENG 108 LibGuide, Research Guide. And my information is here. You can also click Schedule Appointment to schedule a virtual appointment with me. And if you just have a quick question about access, you can also always go to the library homepage, library.uncg.edu, and click this Chat with a Librarian to be able to chat with someone in the library during the hours that we are open.